you likely clicked on this video because you saw the title, Kevin Feige is a fraud. This probably provoked a visceral reaction in you one way or another. You probably clicked because you wanted your bias confirmed, like a fat person being asked if they want it supersized. Or maybe you clicked this in a rage because you wanted to hate watch like an online reviewer watching the last season of Doctor Who. Well, I'm going to state my arguments and make my case, and hopefully we can all have a clear and level-headed discussion in the comments. My belief is that Kevin Feige was never the driving force of the MCU. The MCU was actually built by a man you may have never even heard of, businessman and conservative donor Ike Perlmutter. Ike Perlmutter is the power behind the Marvel Empire. If Kevin Feige was the Darth Vader, then Perlmutter was the Emperor, the one really in power, hiding behind the scenes. Funny enough, their working relationship ended in much the same way. If you look at the early MCU films, when Ike Perlmutter was in control, you'll notice several of the films are right-wing in nature or have right-wing themes running throughout them. When I say right-wing, I'm talking in the traditional American political sense, like this scale. So, if you think the most right-wing ideology possible is a Nazi, turn this video off right now. This isn't for you. One of the most clear-cut examples of right-wing ideology in the entire MCU is on display very early on in Iron Man 2, as the government essentially argues with Tony Stark over whether he should be allowed to keep his Iron Man suit, a.k.a. his gun. America is secure. You want my property? You can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. In the Avengers, the governmental agency is willing to blow up Manhattan and launch a nuke at it like I launch shit at the toilet after a trip to Taco Bell. <laughs> Private citizens end up saving the day. Captain America and the Winter Soldier is essentially all about the NSA and government spying on people. In the end, Captain America decides government agencies shouldn't have this power and fights to bring down the government's ability to spy on people. Another example is in Captain America Civil War. In the original Civil War storyline from the comic books and in the movie, there is a debate about whether the heroes should have to register their identities with the government or not. Captain America wants the heroes to not have to register, and Iron Man believes that the government should hold the heroes responsible and force them to register. The comic book takes great efforts to not make either Cap or Iron Man the protagonist. The movie takes a different approach. It's even in the title of the movie, Captain America Civil War. It could have easily been titled Avengers Civil War. But the movie was clearly taking a stance. The movie wants you to side with Cap. He's the protagonist of the movie. The movie takes the more conservative or classically liberal position that people should be independent and free to make their own choices without government oversight. This, I believe, is done at the behest of Ike Perlmutter. So, we can see Ike Perlmutter's fingerprints all over the first three phases of the MCU. It isn't until later in Phase 3 that he lost his grip and power over the movies after he had a famous fight with Disney CEO Bob Iger. This is an excerpt from Bob Iger's book. I've been in the business long enough to have heard every old argument in the book, and I've learned that old arguments are just that, old, and out of step with where the world is and where it should be. We had a chance to make a great movie and to showcase an underrepresented segment of America, and those goals were not mutually exclusive. I called Ike and told him to stop putting up roadblocks and ordered that we put Black Panther and Captain Marvel into production. Now, part of me believes this is true from Bob Iger, but the other part of me has my bullshit detector going off. So let's dive into this statement a bit. Do I think Ike was delaying Black Panther. No, I do not. Ike Perlmutter tried to make a Black Panther movie with Wesley Snipes in the early 90s. For various reasons, the project never went anywhere. In fact, it was a black superhero movie that ended up saving Marvel Studios. Blade was a smash hit and allowed for the studio to survive and become the giant it is today. So I think we can probably debunk Iger's claim that Perlmutter didn't want to make a movie starring a black superhero. What about Iger's claim that Perlmutter didn't want to make a female-led superhero? Well, that one is probably true. Here's what Ike said in a leaked email about female superhero movies to a Sony executive. Michael, 
As we discussed on the phone, below are just a few examples. There are more. Thanks, Ike. Electra, Marvel. Very bad idea, and the end result was very, very bad. Catwoman. Catwoman was one of the most important female characters within the Batman franchise. This film was a disaster. Supergirl. Supergirl was one of the most important female superheroes in the Superman franchise. This movie came out in 1984 and did 14 million total domestic with an opening weekend of 5.5 million. Again, another disaster. Best Ike. You'll notice that Ike isn't worried about the politics of the situation. Ike will not succumb to political Jedi mind tricks. Ike only cares about the financial success of the movie. Mind tricks gonna work on me. Only money. Now, aside from the box office, there may be another reason Ike didn't want female superheroes. The dirty secret of superhero movies is they have been profitable largely because of ancillary revenue. Ike Perlmutter, again, a man only concerned with money did not want to make action figures with female characters. It's either he's a misogynist or his decades of experience as head of toy biz gave him some insight into that business. He probably had some inkling that female characters don't move action figures as much as male characters. Again, concerned only with making the maximum amount of profit, he didn't want to make figures that wouldn't generate money and eventually end up on clearance racks. Kevin Feige did not share this view with Perlmutter. Kevin wasn't completely driven by money. He was driven by ideology. This led to several clashes at the studio, and eventually Disney CEO Bob Iger stepped in, and he pried control away from Perlmutter. Iger would later say, Kevin is one of the most talented film executives in the business, but my sense was that the strained relationship with New York was threatening his continued success. I knew I had to intervene, and so in May 2015, I made the decision to split Marvel's movie-making unit off from the rest of Marvel and bring it under Alan Horn and the Walt Disney Studios. Kevin would now report directly to Alan and would benefit from his experience, and the tensions that had built up between him and the New York office would be alleviated. This move was announced September 2015. So, any announced project from Marvel before May 2015 would have some of Perlmutter's fingerprints on it. Things were established or at least discussed early on, with Thanos being first seen in the Avengers in 2012, so we know that he has something to do with Infinity War and Endgame. Aside from that, in October 2014, the original Marvel Phase 3 slate was revealed, and that still culminated in Infinity War Part 2, which of eventually became titled Endgame. So the bones of the first three phases of the MCU all happened with Perlmutter at the helm. Now, back to the reason you clicked on this video. Let's look at what Feige has made in the MCU post Perlmutter. Black Widow, a movie that was killed in the box office due to the pandemic, and a day and date release. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, a messy movie that got middling reaction and middling reviews. The Eternals, Marvel's first bomb and a movie largely forgotten today. Some would give Feige credit for Spider-Man No Way Home, but that was a Sony production, not Marvel Studios. So no credit from me here, Kev. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, an energetic and frantic movie that was divisive. It was also a modest box office hit compared to what came in phases one through three. Thor Love and Thunder, a movie pretty hated that didn't make much money. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, a financial success that many people really disliked. And the internet's current favorite punchline, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. There are also eight Marvel TV shows with varying degrees of quality, but most are forgotten or became meme fodder online. Kevin Feige's batting average without Ike Perlmutter is spotty, and there's really no way around this fact. That's why I say Feige is a fraud. He needs to prove himself in the new phases, or it's time we start rethinking how we view Kevin Feige as the head of Marvel. As I was finishing this essay, Disney fired Ike completely, removing him from Marvel. So now any hope of Ike coming back and riding the ship is gone. Will Feige write the ship, and will the other Marvel phases click the same way phases 1 through 3 did? Only time will tell. I thank you all for making it this far.
This isn't the usual content we cover on the channel, but I figured it could be fun to do some video essays. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. We're mostly a comedy and history podcast, but we have a lot of other things in the works, such as documentary projects, full podcasts, and possibly other video essays. If you liked this, please stick around, like, and subscribe. If you disagree, please let me know why in the comments. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye.